Y'all want anything and everything that associates with black women to be f***ing ghetto. Y'all make everything that associates with black women ghetto. Like, do y'all not realize? Why should black women have to get up? Get glammed up every single day. Other races don't have to do that. They can just put their hair up. We can't. Which is why we wear bonnets in public in Walmart. We're in Walmart. Do you think anybody gives a about how they look in Walmart? White, black? No, they don't care. <laughs> Groceries. After we get called ghetto, we ain't even do shit. We just exist. All you did was look at me and I'm fucking ghetto. I didn't even say shit to you. You just called me ghetto because I own a bonnet. So guys, that opening clip is a young woman defending her right to wear a bonnet. And of course, this particular episode, I'm dealing with a dentist, um, I know her name is Dr. Sutton. I would assume that this is a female dentist who has an office somewhere, um, I, I believe, in, 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 in what I would consider the hood, okay? And the dentist is black, a black woman. But, of course, going to dental school, professional school, I went to medical school, it's not easy. Then when you want to come out and serve your people... They want to come into your office a certain way. So Dr. Sutton <clears throat> politely put out these requirements in her office. No, bonnet, no bonnets, no house shoes, no pajama bottoms. We will be happy to reschedule your appointment per Dr. Sutton. Of course, a lot of these people in black Twitter started getting very upset. You see this, um, you know, people are saying like, this is anti-black. You see this person, honesty, the liar, giving an F about attire until, instead of health. This is just anti-black as hell. And um, another person says, her establishment, same person rather, is literally in the hood in a trap house turned dentist office. Maybe she should relocate to the demographic she prefers instead. I don't care what you tap dancing um, will blur that as jiggeronis who are agreeing with her are seeing actually. And um, this is this is very interesting. This is very interesting. Then after this, the person goes up and tries to pull up some negative reviews of the doctor. And I want to play a clip of Shira 7, right? Now, I don't really agree with what she talks about. But Shira 7 has a response for why black women need to stop wearing bonnets. Let's play this. So please refrain from running out of your house if you can, looking unkept at all times. If you're not, even if you're not getting out the car, at least make sure your hair is decent or throw a wig on or some type of hat or something. But, you know, don't go out there with a bonnet, that's for sure. Because you don't want, you know, what if you get in a car accident and you have to get out of the car and, you know, see what's going on or, you know, Stand in the middle of the street or on the side of the, the highway looking like whatever you look like. You know, and what if the other person's dressed really well and da -da -da -da, you know, automatically they might think it's your fault just because you look crazy. <laughs> you know, they're going to be harder on you if you look ugly and the person that hit you is beautiful. I'm just trying to tell you. Be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Officer, I really didn't see where she was coming from. It's because she came out of nowhere. And she's going to just lie straight up on you because she's cute and the officer going to be like, okay. Ma'am, you at fault because you literally, period, done. You know what I'm saying? So you better look good. Now, this is this is interesting to me, okay? She was saying that if you're a black woman and you're outside, refrain from wearing bonnets because if anything happened, you get in the car accident, which I've never thought about, you're going to be out there looking crazy. If the officer shows up and the officer is white, they're going to think that you're automatically in the wrong because you don't look presentable. Now, I don't understand why people feel that whenever you want black people to operate at a high level, that that's anti-black. Which is to say that black people who are being foolish are representing themselves in a ghetto fashion. That is the real black culture. If that's the case, then stop celebrating the Tulsa Massacre. Stop celebrating all of our black inventors. Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, people that we know as high-quality blacks. 
All right. Dr. Amos Wilson. All right. Those people. We ought to stop doing that. But we don't. We want black culture to be ghetto. Dr. Our, 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 uh, Arthur G. Gaston in Alabama. See, our, our culture, we want to make it only hood. And when we have our black professionals who are nice enough to want to come back into some of the urban areas and inspire, because y'all are going to cry and say, well, our black elites, our talented blacks, they don't want to come and serve the black community. And then when they do and want to engage you with, hey, here are the rules, y'all get upset. Because bonnet behavior, house shoes, pajamas, is not the becoming of an attire that a lot of us as blacks won't associate with. I'm sorry. It is, it, those are for the house for most people. If you don't like her rules, don't go to where she's at. That's all you got to do. Don't do that. But I, I applaud the sister for trying to clean up the black image. Because the one of the things is that, look, if you want people to take you seriously, you're going to have to act the part and look the part. And, I, and, I, and I'm one of the most dustiest people on planet Earth when it comes to dressing sometimes. But now, going out with a bonnet, clearly the woman is even, for, even for black women out there, black women are always talking about they're the, 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 the most uh, least protected, that, um, you know, all of these things, uh, the, these people are picking on them, they're stereotyped. Well, honey, if that's the case, you can't play into the stereotype that you feel is bringing down your group. What if a black man, if she would have said, no sagging jeans, y'all wouldn't have had no issue with it. You're going to have to conduct yourself at a certain level. Everything anti-black isn't, everything that's ghetto is anti-black. Do you know that as, as black, some of us, we will fight for the right not to unite, we will fight for the right to remain in our in, in our stupidity amongst certain things. We won't even fight to work together, support each other in business, do all of We're not trying to do that. But now when it comes to being foolish, we will fight all day for that trap music. We will fight to go to Glorilla concerts, to be ghetto, even though that's not that when we talk about our greats and stuff, we never talk about bonnet wearers, do we? Anybody that's influenced black America historically, none of them were bonnet wearers. Were they not? House shoe wearers, pajama wearers. I don't want to go outside to Walmart. Now think about that. What if black people acted like that during the 60s? We would have never been taken serious as a group. Never. We would still be in Jim Crow now. The whole point of us getting those rights from the elders was to push the conversation to the forward, not to argue for stupid stuff like wearing bonnets with your house clothes. Pajamas are house clothes. House shoes are house clothes. And you have a sister that's trying to come back and give back to her people, knowing she probably can make more money somewhere else. And y'all are mad at that. So then what, what, what do you want? Do you want to remain in your silliness? Do you want to remain in, 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 in basking in stupidity all day? Is this what we're, what we're arguing about? Then you wonder why you have your talented blacks. I'm going to tell you how it works. Talented blacks, men or women, when they encounter situations like this, they will all go and tell that doctor, I told you don't go over there with him. Because I know. I have... Some of my best buddies are MBAs, internal medicine doctors, dentists. They'll tell you, oh, shake, don't you go over there. When I finished medical school, I wanted to be a, a GP in the inner city. I, one, of my, one, of my, one of my colleagues is an OBGYN. She was in Camden. She got out of Camden, came back to Sacramento to Elk Grove. I will, I will never. She said, I have patients trying to fight me. You tell somebody they got a chlamydia STD. They want to fight you, some of them. So this is the thanks that you get when you want to clean up your people and, and get them to act right? But no. 
and you wonder why you have so much of black elitism going on. That's why you don't you have blacks when they they have these private groups, and you have a lot of uh, people who are practicing pro black elitism, for the fact that when you encounter certain people in the black America, they they going they will gonna fight you tooth and nail to be silly. Just like some of the brothers on here with y'all little uh, 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 caping for Becky. Y'all will fight tooth and nail for that, some of y'all. Just like you have some of the brothers also will fight to be foolish. And then you wonder why I tell them the people don't want to come back and help y'all. Because this, this is what I'm saying. So we, we, we got to have some rules of engagement, family. Our women don't need to be out there thinking that somebody, we got to tell them. You can go out there all you want. Stop thinking that somebody going to have a lot of respect for you if you choose that route. Like you want. Like you want. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson. Back at it again with another episode of The Celebrity Junk. Pretty probably you do scrape the bell. I'm out.